All right, guys, three minutes and go. Welcome to the Be Kind Podcast. It's Podcast Monday. First, a sponsor, unofficially, sip from Drag Up Coffee, the best dang coffee in the whole wide world. As you guys know, I'm in Arizona, uh, taking care of my brother. We are three weeks post op, uh, and uh, we got the Official word, we're going to skip the second dialysis. When we get to three, they take the catheter out, and we're just one step closer to go home. And, uh, you know, we're both ready. He's tired, I'm tired, and not in a bad way, just, you know, we, we want to get back to our environment to start that healing process at home. And I'm really proud of him. So today's podcast is on... I have my book. The it's about fear, all right, and about the six major fears that we as humans go through and what they mean to us. So let me go ahead and start with what are the six major fears. You have the fear of poverty, the fear of criticism, the fear of ill health, fear of loss of love of someone you care about, fear of old age, and the fear of death. And then there's a special fear that tops all of it, which is the devil's workshop, which is where the basis of all those fears manifest and grow. And something I read is really interesting. Like you guys know, I'm reading the Think and Grow Rich book. I really recommend you guys get it um, by Napoleon Hill. And the reason I'm starting with this is, as we've talked about other aspects of the book, is I'm starting with this because if you don't face these fears and realize which ones are running your life, then the 13 principles we've learned in the previous chapters, no matter how hard you work at them, they're not going to come to fruition because fear will always be at the base of everything you do. And I can speak from example when I, from experience when I say that living a life of fear is a life that's set in the comfort zone, settling, not giving enough, or actually manifesting that fear. Because if you're always thinking something bad's going to happen, the universe is going to manifest that because that believes that's what you want. The universe as a whole doesn't realize there is no good or bad. You have to do the work to manifest and to fight against the six things of fear or the six major f- causes of fear to act. See, fear doesn't need any work. It just, if you allow it, then it's going to manifest. To be positive, to manifest change, to be the, the umph in your life, you have to have a plan. You got to have a definitive purpose. You got to have uh, uh, persistence. You got to have faith. You got to have desire. And what I realized in doing, in doing this manifestation work and realizing where I was truly falling short was that, okay, so I wrote, out, uh, you have to outwit the six ghosts of fear, right? And first things first, you need to clear out indecision, doubt, and fear. Big things that have ran my life for the longest time. No more. Like I realized, like, you know, for a prime example, you know, uh, I had a situation going on at work where I was kind of the mindset, you know, I don't hear nothing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, poke the bear and it's going to happen. What's going to happen. And I made a decision today that I was going to call and I was going to, uh, I was going to put myself out there and be like, Hey, let's, let's hit this head on. And the universe answered it. I got a letter in the mail that confirmed everything was the way I needed it to be. So when I call tomorrow, uh, or actually Wednesday, when we get the second round of numbers um, to see if we missed the third and very important uh, dialysis uh, appointment, we're one step closer to going home, but I'm, I'm better equipped. But I had made the decision that I'm going to face this indecision of, oh, I'm not going to, I haven't heard anything, so nothing, no news is good news. No, face it head on because... Indecision is the seedling of fear. Indecision crystallizes into doubt. The two blend together and become a cocktail 
of fear. And I've had drank from that cocktail since I was a very young kid. You know, like one of my first memories, and it's sad to say, was I remember waiting for my dad, my biological dad. We had a screen door, and I was waiting for my dad. He was supposed to pick me up, and I fell asleep, and I woke up on the couch, and all I heard was my parents fighting, and my mom stabbed my dad with a meat tenderizing fork. And that was like my, that's my first vivid memory of childhood. And I, and no, it's no, nothing against my father. My father, I didn't know it at the time, was battling addiction. Uh, and he was doing the best he could, it's not an excuse. But, you know, being that I have survived addiction, I understand when your addiction has you in the grips, nothing else matters. And I'm truly grateful that I never had kids in my addiction and my kids have never seen me loaded. And I'm not saying that as a shot to my dad, I'm just saying that I have a new understanding, but from an early age, I've always ran on fear. And, you know, seeing my sister survive domestic violence, being in situations with people that I shouldn't be in because I was trying to be cool or I thought that's what I wanted to be. You know, fear ran my life for so long that I didn't even know it was fear. I just thought it was, it, I was living. And I wasn't even living, I was surviving at best. And it all ties in together and makes sense that for the longest, no wonder I didn't have an abundant life or I didn't make the right decisions because I made all my decisions based on fear. And for me, in seeing that, if I'm struggling with the, the, the six basic fears and I'm allowing it into my mind, I have to make a conscious decision to deal with it right then and there and replace it with this counterpart, the six positive things uh, that influence your life. And I'll talk about that on another podcast. And uh, all of this came through a book that I've read several times and none of this has ever sank in until this time. And this all started because I read the book, The Alchemist, the first. I had some life-changing experiences. I had someone prophesize over me at the end of the year, literally five minutes before the new year started. The other day I had confirmation from another random source who only knows me through social media and was like, hey, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, whoa, like, are you been reading my journal? Have you been like, uh, tick uh, f- stalking me, like you're speaking directly into my spirit. Like, and I've been sitting here in the desert, funny 40 days in the desert, right? Hallelujah. Uh, sitting here telling the universe, like, Hey, I'm doing everything that is placed in front of me. I need confirmation that I'm not blowing smoke up my own butt. And, uh, and because I, I don't want to live a life in fear anymore. I refuse to. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I deter. I have come to determine that I deserve the best life possible and I am willing to do whatever it takes to achieve it. And that means getting comfortable in the uncomfortable, doing things I'm afraid to do and stepping into my greatness and realizing that the universe will manifest the life of my dreams if I'm willing to do the work. Fear is nothing more than a state of mind. What wolf am I feeding? Am I feeding the, the, the black wolf, which is stuck on anger, fear, depression, low self-esteem, everything that eats at the very core of the beauty of what makes me me? Or am I feeding the white wolf that is love, hope, healing, greatness, abundance. And here's the kicker. Look, I am speaking financial abundance into my life because money doesn't buy you happiness, but it makes life a lot easier. But I realized today more than ever, especially being here at the clinic, that my life is so ridiculously abundant right now, I am well overpaid. And I haven't even scratched the surface. And I wrote this down with a star next to it. It says, 
thought, imp thought impulses begin immediately to translate themselves into physical, into their physical equivalent, whether those thoughts are voluntary or involuntary. And here's the kicker. So I got an email from work stating that my work schedule had changed. And as you guys know, if you followed my story, I finally got to Graveyard. And at first I was super against going to Graveyard because X, Y, and Z, and it was all, it was fear in my mind. And turned out that Graveyard was the best thing since sliced bread for me, as long as I stay accountable to my sleep schedule. So right away, my hands started sweating, my heart was going do 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 Like I was hyperventilating to a point I reached out to my coworkers at work like, hey, I got this email, can you guys check my schedule at work? And, uh, and as I realized what was happening, I said, wait a minute, because I'm doing this uh, in the part of this book, it has five pages of a self-assessment about you and these six fears in your life. And I said, wait a minute, this is fear, fear of poverty, fear of criticism. What are the, what are the opposites? I said, fear of poverty, I have a great job, and I have faith, I'm positive about it. Like, I, my job is safe. Criticism, what's the opposite of fear of criticism? Praise, or, uh, hold on. Uh, fear of criticism, Fear uh, or the positiveness is enthusiasm, uh, faith, whatever you want, you replace it with. And I, I, I was reading those in my head like, you got this, the universe knows that you're, you're doing the right thing for the right reasons. Like I immediately saw it for what it was once I realized my heart was going too fast, I was feeding the negative wolf, my hands were clammy, and I said, wait a minute, I got the tools to stop this. And I did it. And then literally, talk about instant. I get a call from my spouse saying, hey, you got a letter from work. Do you want me to read it to you? First thought was, no, it's them, X, Y, Z. Because I didn't even like saying what I was thinking because if you say it, you're going to manifest it. And I said, you know what? Let's do it. Open. Let me face this head on. Read it. And it was my FMLA had been approved, which is a huge relief. And... All I can say is the only thing I control is my state of mind. And if my state of mind creates and controls my reality, what am I feeding it? Am I feeding that fear to feast on itself, which then internally starts in feasting, feasting on me? And it literally is like a, uh, a parasite. It gets to my heart and my spirit and my soul and starts eating at the very thing that makes me me by telling me I don't deserve what my heart is placed on it. That fear eats upon itself until I am a shell of who I was and I allow fear to dictate every thought I do and every action I make. I've been doing that for 30 plus years and I refuse to allow fear to run my life. Nothing stands between me and my every desire except the lack of a definitive purpose and allowing fear to run my life. Like, let me say that one more time for somebody because I think you need to hear it just as much as I need to hear it. Nothing stands between me and my every desire except the lack of a definitive purpose and fear running my life. Now, my definitive purpose is very clear now. I am changing the world through a random act of kindness one person at a time. And sometimes the most kindest thing I can do is be kind to me. It's free and it's priceless and it's changing my world. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. There's days where I go down the rabbit hole, I wanna burn the place down, let's light the fire, rah, 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 rah. I am my own pity party. But here's the kicker, here's where the, I now am recognizing for what it is and I'm learning this book, The Alchemist, my Bible, uh, this Love Dare book that I'm reading, like I am doing things necessary to change the process that allows me to see reality for what it is and manifest the life of my dreams because of what I'm feeding the most fertile land ever made, my mind. I am, I am healing the things that broke it 
I'm forgiving myself for the things that I allowed to happen and I'm learning to love me right where I am and allowing myself room to make mistakes and grow and have faith in my higher power who I call God because no matter what I go through and whatever world that I manifest, my God is going to make sure that not only can I get through it if it's not part of his plan, but I'm going to learn from whatever lesson that's in front of me. And that's huge empowerment and in growth and things that you don't realize you're doing when you're in the middle of the picture. You can't see the frame because you can't see what beyond what's right in front of you. And if you feel like the world is falling apart because your lens is jaded and broken and all you see is fear, 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 fear. When you take that one thing, like I said. December 31st, 1155, I was told that my perspective was broken and I needed to change it and step into my greatness. And for once in my life, at 48 plus years, I said, you know what? Okay. And I put in the new perspective, didn't know how to use it, didn't quite fit. I kind of hammered it in a little bit. And then every day since then, it slid more and more. And then one day it just clicked, click. And I'm not saying it's perfect. You know, that negative perspective tries to come in like an old pair of glasses. But, you know, I got these glasses last year around October. And uh, I had a history of diabetes, so I have to get my eye checked uh, every, uh, every year. And my, I, before I got these new pair of glasses, I, set the gla- uh, I had the glasses I was wearing prior and I had my old pair of glasses, which was like from two years ago. So I put those old pair of glasses on and yeah, I could see, but it was still like, oh, it gave me a headache. And that's what like, what it feels like now when I wear, if the negativity comes in, it's like I'm trying to put those old glasses on. They don't fit the same no more. The prescription does not match what I'm doing. There's my John Cena moment. You can't see me. Did you guys watch WrestleMania yesterday? That was pretty awesome. Zena, Cena, freaking, the Undertaker, The Rock, like it was, anyways, totally boy moment. <sighs> Fear has guided me for so long and make mistakes, proving it right because it's what fear, because I, what I fear in my mind. Like, I would always expect the other shoe to drop or the worst thing to happen. And then when it did happen, all it did was solidify that I was a POS or life was, wasn't fair. Uh, why wasn't I born with a silver spoon? Or why didn't I get the same opportunity as so-and-so? Well, you know what? There's a very select few people in society who are born with generational wealth and don't have to work for it. That's okay. That's, somebody in their family did. And they're lucky. The other 99% of us who, who changed their direction of their family have to work with it. They have definitive purpose, they have desire, they have passion, they have persistence, they have faith. They have everything that is in my life now a thousand fold and I am learning at 48 what it is I lack, how to achieve it and how to manifest it in my life. But for the longest time, the only thing that I was manifesting in my life was fear. So when life showed me a life that was worth being fearful of, how was I supposed to think there was anything different because I was the one manifesting it. And people say, well, it's, you know, God, this and that. Listen, my God isn't going to have me live through living hell because he's trying to prove a point to me. My God is going to give me the, the ability and the strength to get through a, a living hell that I place myself in. God didn't say, Dennis, you know what? You're going to be an addict and be, and be shot and go to prison and do all this other crap in your life because I'm punishing you. My God said, you know what, Dennis, I'm going to love you through your addiction, your prison terms, bad decisions, hurting people. I'm going to love you until you can learn to love yourself. And I'm going to put people in your life that are going to love you even when you don't love yourself. Because he knew that I was allowing fear to run my life. And he knew that I deserved so much more. He gave me gifts and talents that I had to bring into the forefront of my spirit. Like my mom would always say, if I ever used my powers for good, I would change the world. And there was a line in the book, and I paraphrase it, but it really resonated with me. 
especially for the 30 plus years of how I lived my life. I was bargaining with life for pennies, just enough to, to, to survive. Instead of demanding prosperity, abundance, riches, and contentment and happiness because I didn't think I deserved it. Let me say that one more time. Bargaining with life for pennies instead of demanding prosperity, abundance, richness, contentment, and happiness. You have the ability to change the world because you manifest your thoughts into reality. And the universe doesn't know the difference between good and bad. If all you're thinking about is death, poverty, illness, sadness, depression, anger, fear, then that's all you're gonna manifest. I'm telling you from experience, I'm speaking from the heart. The world is made up of two things. Energy and matter. Energy is what you put out. Matter is what you manifest. Fear is purely based on the unknown and what my lack of faith and replacing it with the unknown with. And prior to this self-evolution, I would always put the worst case scenario because my thought was if I prepare for the worst case scenario, then anything better than the worst case scenario, I'm winning. But then I would get mad and say, oh, life isn't fair because the worst case scenario was always manifesting. Now I realize that it was always manifesting because that's all I was focusing on. Worry is a state of mind based on fear. Worry is a form of sustained fear based and caused by indecision. Therefore, it is a state of mind which can be controlled. Like I was telling you about that work scenario. I had made a commitment that I was going to make a call if I didn't hear anything, I didn't find out anything regarding my FMLA. And I literally made that decision last night. Now, mind you, on Friday, I had called my supervisor three times. I didn't know he was out of, the, uh, out of town. I called my coworker, said, hey, is Ron there? And uh, he's like, no, he's on vacation. And I said, okay, well, come Monday, if I don't hear anything, I'm going to call and I was waiting to get back from my brother's appointments. So if worst case scenario, I, at least I was, if I had a, a breakdown, I was here and not at the hospital and I, we would be done with my, my brother wouldn't need me. Like when we, we come home after his doctor visit, she usually rests. And the universe said, okay, you made the decision to do something. I'm going to answer your, I'm going to answer that call before you even make it. And I got the letter. I am killing the habit of worry in all forms because I accept that nothing life has to offer is worth the price of worry. With this decision, I step into my poise, peace of mind, calmness of thought, and personal happiness. It is my privilege to use the power to think to make the life of my dreams. I think that's a perfect place to end this podcast. If you are living in a life of fear and this video has come across your feed, it is the universe's way of telling you, you deserve so much more than what you're settling on. Kill the habit of worry in all forms because accept that nothing life has to offer is worth the price of worry. With this decision, you step into your poise, your peace of mind, and calmness of thought and personal happiness. You have a privilege to use the power to make the life of your dreams. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. It's priceless, it's free, and I promise you, we will change the world one random act of kindness at a time. We are changing the world one can random act of kindness at a time. I'm living proof of it. If you haven't already done so, like, follow, subscribe, share this video on this channels across all social media with your family, friends, strangers, people you don't like, people, you, whoever. 
Somebody needs to hear this message. If it's coming across your feed, if you could do it to five people, that'd be great. I hope you have a great day. Come back next week, Podcast Monday. They drop every midnight at uh, Tuesday morning at midnight. Thank you guys for so much. Uh, I appreciate you. Have a great day. Be blessed. Know that if you woke up today, you were given the gift of 1,440 minutes to change the world with your magic. We need it. Till next time.